So here's my Gep RC MX3 Sparrow. It was a pretty fun build. It was a little bit of a challenge for a 3 inch. The amount of space you have to put all the components uh, is a little bit small compared to some other 3 inch builds you can do. As you can see we did a double stack board. On the bottom we have a cicada all in one board. It's got 30 amp ESCs. Above that we have the run cam board. So I have the run cam split version 2. On top of that we have our VTX and our receiver. The first thing you might notice is that my run cam is black. I'm not a big fan of the orange and being that the space is so limited, that orange was just so bright within the overall build that we took the run cam split apart, put the shell in the uh, spray booth and painted it a nice matte black. It hides it a little bit better and I think it just gives a, you know an overall uh, a better look compared to that bright orange. If you have three boards, your camera might be a little limited on the range of angle it can go. I have it set about halfway now. I'm actually going to move this screw up to the top hole. It'll allow even more range because I was looking a little bit out of the ground, a little bit at the ground flying around the other day. This thing is wicked fast, um, incredibly fast. I've seen people saying they're breaking 100 miles an hour. Um, I've hit at least 75, and I did that by doing goalpost to goalpost out on a football field. 360 feet in 3.64 seconds. So an average speed right at 70 miles an hour. Um, give or take, that's the average. So this thing is moving. So one thing different I did is I put a circular polarized antenna. It was a bit of a challenge. Like I've said, it's such a tight fit. I had to actually do a 90, run it up pretty much parallel with the top of the frame just to keep it out of the way of the boards below. If you buy the Gep RC Sparrow already made, um, it comes with a dipole antenna that they actually run out the back. And as quick as this thing is, and the amount of ground it really does cover, you want the circular polarized antenna. But it's a bit of a challenge if you use their mount. Um, I use some hot glue to keep those in place. So if you do go with the cicada, there's one thing I have to point out is this back part of the board is actually too wide to fit in the sparrow frame. If you notice on the bottom, I actually have two washers underneath those screws. I took a steel drill bit and very carefully drilled the carbon fiber and made the hole slightly bigger. I mean, we're talking, you know, as thick as that heat shrink is on each side was about how th too thick or too wide the cicada board was. Granted, then I added heat shrink because you have to, I don't know, I could have been a little too paranoid, but I wanted to insulate the frame from the copper that runs around the edge of the cicada board. So when all, when all that's said and done, I had to add some washers, drill the holes a little bit bigger to make it fit, but it's as sturdy as it, you know, as it would have been before. I have a set of RK3076 props on here. These things scream. No matter where this thing was in the air, I could hear it flying around. Definitely pulling a lot of air through the props. A little bit less battery life compared to like your 3040 Lumineers. Pretty standard mild props. This thing is still really, really quick with these props on there as well. And if you notice, I've actually used the Crazy Pony battery strap that came with the run cam. The Gep RC ones are a little bit uh, small. This thing's got... Uh, it's, it's pretty beefy. It's going to hold your battery in place. And with all these screws on the bottom, I mean, it's a perfect fit. It holds it on there well. I'd recommend doing your XT30 a little bit shorter than I did. I'm going to uh, resolder that. I also, just to get rid of yellow, I need to put a little bit more Sharpie on that. I just Sharpied the yellow XT30. All right, and real quick. We got 